breeding superworms versus breeding mealworms. Which one's best? Well, in this video, we're going to break it down into our five topics. They are the equipment that you're going to need. How much equipment are you going to need for each individual one? The upfront cost. How much does it cost to actually start up each farm? We're going to run through all of that. How easy is it to breed each one of them? The next is how long does it take for the basically your worm to go into beetle, then to start producing worms, then for those worms to actually get to adult size, ready for you to feed your animals. How long does that process take? But then the next one, the downside of each individual one. We're gonna run through each individual topic right now in this video so that you can pick which one's best for you to pick. So for the last four years, I've been breeding my own live food. That's dubia roaches, superworms, mealworms. I even had a good go at um, Madagascan giant hissing cockroaches. And this channel sort of thrives on those sorts of videos. Most of my videos, my top 10 videos on this channel, are all live food related, whether it be breeding or keeping or hacks or anything like that. So if it's something you're interested in, why not consider subscribing? Right, let's move on and start with the equipment that you're gonna need. We'll start off with superworms. I do it on a small scale. I breed around about 45 beetles at any one time. That's about my limit and that feeds all of my animals perfectly fine. This is the small little container that I have all of mine in. I have the beetles in there, some baby worms in there, and I've pupate a few beetles in there. That's basically it, it's just dead simple. But you're gonna need yourself a container like this. If you wanna do it on a bigger scale, go for a bigger container like this. What you're also gonna need is, you can see these little, one ounce tubs, these little things with lids because you need to separate your superworms individually into little tiny tubs like this to be able to get them to pupate and turn into beetles. But other than that, you're going to need a box to put them in. Now, you can, I like to put a lot of mine in a box just like this because it's extremely dark. I've noticed a better production by putting them in this as opposed to putting them in there like that. I'm still doing some testing because on this channel we do a lot of testing. So if you want to see the results of any tests, just click subscribe. You're going to need some oats. You're going to need leftover banana peel or anything like that. Like I say, we try and teach you guys ways you can save money. Leftover banana peel feeds both the worms and the beetles perfectly fine. And then other than that, for superworm breeding, you're just going to need some superworms. If you've not learned how to breed superworms yet and you want to know exactly how to, step by step, with loads of little money saving tips and loads of little life hacks, it's, the, it's how I've done it, it's very productive for me and it's a really popular video on this channel. If you wanna see that, just click on that card just there. But let's move on to the equipment you're gonna need for mealworms. Now this is gonna shock you guys because I do it different to everybody else. And that's because I don't need a massive high production of mealworms. So I can do it really just joyful, bit of fun here and there. The only time I really feed mealworms off to any of my animals is when I wanna give my bearded dragon just a little bit something different, just a change every now and then because they're not highly nutritious so they're not really great for a bearded dragon but it is a change so it's a bit of enrichment. Sometimes I'll feed them off to the leopard geckos but the only time I really feed my leopard gecko babies is on mealworms and the babies only come around once a, once a year do you know what I mean? I don't really need a high production. I basically, you see these tubs, I've got that one there and that one there, I just chucked mealworms in a tub. Eventually they started breeding. I've got a good production let's take you over there and show you it's not pretty it's really not pretty at all but look i've got beetles i've got mealworms i've got everything and i basically as you can tell banana peel with beetles on it i've just got a load of oats chucked them in the bottom chucked in little bits of cardboard and cup holders and just a bit of basically everything bits of wood and i chuck in banana peel every time my son has a banana, I chuck the peels in here and down here. The only other thing different here is, you can see all the little pots. Well, that's the Pangea tubs that I use for my morning geckos. Every time there's a bit of Pangea left, I chuck it in and they eat that. So, regards for the equipment that you need for breeding mealworms, just a tub will do. The way I do it, it's just a tub. This is not the most productive way of doing it. You ain't gonna get the most production, but you do get a good turnover. And there's always mealworms, there's always babies, and there's always beetles, and you have to basically do nothing. That's it, absolutely nothing. Then like I said, they're not pretty. They're really not pretty, but they work. You just need a tub, 
now you know the equipment, you can sort of just start to get a good idea on what the actual upfront costs are going to be, which is this next point that we're going to cover now. So we'll start off once again with superworms. So for the stack tower thing, you can pick them up cheap enough from your local Asda, your local Walmart, your local wherever you can pick one up from. It doesn't matter. All you need to do is give it a good clean. That's it. I've got everything that's actually being shown in this video. They're all linked in my Amazon store down below in the description. So if you want to go and check out some prices for yourself, feel free to nip down there, have a look. You don't have to buy from there, but if you do buy from there, I get a little commission kickback from that. So I'd greatly appreciate it. Those little one ounce cups that you've seen, now they're just cheap and cheerful. Again, they're linked down below, but I think they cost around about five pounds, British pounds, so about $6 or something like that. And I picked up 50 of them. As I say, I have 45 beetles in production every single time. Every two weeks or so, I'll put another 45 worms into the actual containers. I'll put them away so that basically every single two weeks, I'll have a new production of beetles. So I will never go without beetles. As for the oats, you can go down to your local Walmart, your local Asda, your local Tesco's, pick up the cheapest bag you can possibly find. That'll do perfectly fine. I think I pay about 73 pence, which is about a dollar, uh, for a big bag, and that lasts me two months quite easily. I just pour it in, Oof, jobs are good, and that'll do. As for the moisture source, I use banana peel mainly, simply because that's a free product. My son has a banana, it gets chucked in there, done. That is it. The shoe box was perfectly free, absolutely fine. Now let's move on to the mealworms. This topic, this point, is gonna go through rather quickly because let's face it, for the mealworms, I already covered the oats, 70 odd P, perfectly fine. And the tub that they go into, I had that just lying around. Go and have a look in your attics, your lofts, under your stairs, under your bed, you'll find a tub somewhere, that'll do. If not, go down to your local Walmart, you can pick one up for a quid, perfectly fine. That is it, so your upfront costs can be as cheap as you want or as expensive as you want. If you've got an extremely cold house, you might wanna look into adding some additional heat sources perfectly fine use a heat mat use heat cable you can stick it in the hot area of your house above the boiler underneath the boiler in the airing cupboard on top of a basking spot you've got loads of options pick one stick to it so let's move on to number three which is how easy are they we're going to start off once again with superworms and they're easy they really are easy they can take a little bit more fiddling just to get it ever so perfectly you have to chain put all of your superworms into the little separate tubs that can take a little bit of time to do it. So you just close them up, whack them in the tub. Now sometimes you will get your worms will go a bit dead and a bit black and a bit gunky and just horrible. It takes a bit of time and sort of working out what actually makes it work perfect for you. They're both easy. They are both easy. Just super worms take a little bit more time and a little bit more fiddling just to get the conditions absolutely perfect for you to get the best pupation to turn your worms into beetles and then to get your beetles once you've got your beetles that's the that's the hard part already done the next is just leave them sort of thing your mealworms i mean could you get any easier you go to the shop you buy your mealworms you get a tub you stick some oats in the bottom you get your tub of mealworms and you tip them in boom sorted keep them fed chuck in some scraps they love it, They're absolutely perfect. If you're having a Sunday dinner, get your scrap vegetables, chuck them in, get your scrap potato skins, chuck them in, get your banana peels, chuck them in, absolutely perfect. The only thing that's a bit bad with these is when it comes time to actually getting your mealworms out, it can be a bit time consuming because I either sit there with the tweezers picking out each individual mealworm that I need because I don't need a lot, like I've said, that's why I do it like this. You can get yourself sourcing sort of mealworm farms, for me, this just worked perfectly fine. It'd be, it can take a bit time consuming. You can use something like these sieves. And, um, but when you've got your, you sieve it out, you shake it about, it gets a bit dusty. It can get up your nose. It can cause sort of allergetic sort of responses where you're sneezing and stuff. And that could last up to two days. So if you're gonna use a sieve, make sure you've got a healthy supply of Puritan in the cupboard so that you don't have the same troubles I actually have. Can you count to 10? It's that easy. Now let's talk how long does it take for your full production to do a full circle so that you can feed your animals for free. Now we're talking starting from, we'll start superworms. From buying your superworms all the way through the breeding process, getting your babies, rearing them up, to actually getting adult sized 
super worms to feed to your animals. Well, let's work this out. You first buy your super worms. It takes, I say, two weeks. Two weeks to gut load your super worms because when you first buy them, they're gonna be dehydrated. It takes about two weeks to get all that hydration and nutrition back into the actual super worms themselves. If you wanna learn how to gut load your super worms and what it actually means and stuff like that, just click on that video just there. Then put them into pupation. It takes about two to three weeks to turn them into pupa. It takes another two weeks for them to turn into beetles. It takes another two weeks for them to become sexually mature. So their exoskeletons are hardened as beetles. They're perfectly fine like that. Then you'll start seeing all the little babies wriggling around. So it only takes about a week for the eggs to actually hatch. Then it'll take about eight weeks for them to be perfectly full size, really hydrated, really good quality for then you to either put them back into the cycle, so pupate your own home bred superworms, put half of them back into the pupa stage so you can keep that cycle going so you'll always have beetles and put the other half in for your live food. So all in all, I didn't count, that didn't take a lot of mass, but a couple of months, a good three months for them to be, maybe even four months for them to actually be perfect size. But if we move on to mealworms, again, it could take a couple of weeks to gut load them, but you don't have to separate them and pupate them. You just leave them and they'll turn into pupa themselves, they'll turn into beetles themselves, they'll mate, they'll lay eggs, they'll do it all themselves. And I've noticed that to take around two months for you to get a good quality mealworm that's good enough to feed off to your animals. But let's talk the downside, shall we? The downside to breeding mealworms is the dust. Quite frankly, just the dust. As you're sieving away and getting separating your mealworms and your beetle, whatever, the dust can really get to you. And it can really, really bug you for a couple of days. You'll have like the allergetic responses. I've already spoke about that, so I'm not going to do it anymore. But that's one big downside to breeding mealworms. It can get dusty. Another one is something that I've not had the privilege of actually working with. Grain mites. I have never had grain mites. But apparently grain mites can be a thing um, and it, it, they're not harmful in the slightest but they can be a bit disheartening when you start seeing the little white bugs running around your colony because basically the only problem that grain mites will give your colony is they'll, they'll start eating the food. That's it. They will eat the food before your worms actually get to it. If you do have that problem, just stick more food in. But with super worms, there's not really a downside to it because everything can be sort of hidden away perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space, but they do require a tiny little bit more heat than what room temperature actually is. As you can tell, I've got my colony there sat on top of my bearded dragon's basking spot. It's night time. He's fast asleep on his log, uh, so the bulbs are off. But my superworm farm is directly on top of his basking spot. So 12 hours a day, when that light is actually on, I've got quite a sufficient amount of heat traveling through that wood and heating it up. So that's how I give it the extra little heat. They're the morning geckos. How cool are they? But they are the downsides to breeding mealworms and superworms. So which one would I pick? Out of superworms and mealworms, I just do them both. Quite frankly, I just do them both. As you can tell, the cost is virtually nothing. They all come in handy. I always use them and I haven't had to pay for live food for an awful long time. That because I breed dubia roaches as well and a lot of my animals are on dubia roaches and whatever. But that's that. If you've enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. If not, hit the thumbs down button. I don't really care. Thanks for watching.